access to something bigger, something outside yourself, a wish, a goal, a dream. And begin, please, inhale. So elbows go up, chin down, all the way up. Suck your stomach in, elbows up towards the ceiling, full arms. Exhale. My name is Jeannie Heaton. I am a Bikram yoga teacher. And I am absolute living proof that no matter how badly you mess up your life, there's always a way back. Six years ago, I was a penniless, homeless heroin addict, a junkie, living on the streets of New York City. I hit my bottom at the Chelsea Hotel. They threw me out, I lit a mattress on fire, and that was the end. And I came out, I was standing in a puddle in the middle of 23rd Street, and I heard someone say, I don't know what that thing someone is, said, go get help, go to Bellevue. And I listened, and I did. And I began, little by slowly, to change my life, um, like a minute, a second, a day, and as I say now, a posture at a time. I had started to take an acting class at Michael Imperioli Studio Dante, where I had met the artistic director there named Francine Volpe. And, um, she suggested that I take her playwriting class because I always wanted to write a play. So I got into her class and one of the only notes she gave me was that I had to take Bikram yoga. I had no idea what that had to do with my play, except now I do. She bought my first 30 days at Bikram Yoga Manhattan with Raphael and I met Raphael the first time. He was my first teacher. She came in with her body covered, completely covered, and as you know this is Bikram yoga so we often encourage people to, you know, wear short, short shorts and, you know, tops that are very, allow you to sweat and allow you to move. Um, she did not do that. She came in with long sleeves and long pants every day. And so I was curious um, as to why that was. And because I was wearing long sleeves in class. It's 105 degrees and I'm wearing long sleeves. And I said, I need to you know, work in a camisole because I'm embarrassed of the way I look. And he said, you know, once you see the truth about yourself in the mirror is only then when you can begin to change it. And that was very, very humbling. And I did tell her that day, I remember, well, now you have to not wear those long pants anymore and those long shirts anymore. You've got to look at your body and face it. And that's what we do here. We have nice mirrors and <laughs> we, <laughs> we really look at ourselves deeply. It's so funny, I was practicing Bikram Yoga all along, um, not having any idea. I mean, hearing, of course, in class, teachers talk to me about the medical benefits, but not having any idea that Bikram Yoga is the yoga for chronic illness and disease, of spiritual, mental, and physical. No idea. I mean, like, and here I am practicing this, wondering, like, God, I feel so great. You know, I'm healing. I'm healing from the inside. No meaning and getting it, but not realizing that it really is, like, it's kind of like the last stop house. What is that saying? The last house on the left. Bikram yoga. You know, if you're like the last house on the left and every doctor's told you they can't help you, this is where you got to come. But on me, I tend to wear my, um, my trials and tribulations from my past all over me, thinking everybody knows. You know, and only I know. You know, and it doesn't really matter. What matters now is that maybe my story is now my greatest asset and that it used to be my greatest defect and my biggest shame and now coming into Bikram Yoga, learning how a day at a time, a second at a time, a posture at a time, a class at a time, a moment at a time to, you know, now embrace myself in the mirror. And now to be a teacher and to be able to give back and to help people overcome their self-loathing, their self-pity, their shame, their fear, their anxiety, their depression in the mirror is the greatest gift that I've ever been given of my life. Seeing her every day is just a total inspiration because I know now where she came from and it, you know, and, and there's, there are people out there that th have hit rock bottom and there's no light at the end of the tunnel for them and they don't see any, any kind of, it's done. And she's testament that that's not true, that there is always somewhere to go. There's always a way out.